Hello and welcome to Through the Mixing Glass. My name is Joel, and today I'm going to be channeling my inner Bill Nye the Science Guy. Because today we're not just going to talk about what you drink, but we're going to talk about what you drink it from, and why I think that you should be drinking your cocktails out of one of these a thermal insulated double wall tumbler. These are great for two things, temperature retention and preventing over dilution. They are going to keep your drinks significantly colder. They're not gonna get as watered down. And what you're gonna have is a drink that tastes the same from the first sip to the last sip. So we're gonna run a few tests today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make three different types of drinks. One is a stirred drink with a big rock of ice. One is a shaken drink over regular ice. And then another one's gonna be served over crushed ice. At the end, we're going to weigh the ice that is left so that we can see exactly how much ice we lost in our testing. And I think the ice that's in this glass is gonna be significantly uh, heavier. It's gonna weigh more. There's gonna be more of it, meaning it's gonna have melted less. So uh, let's get started. Like I said, we're gonna be making three different cocktails today, six cocktails total. So I'm gonna blaze through these recipes. First up is a Tommy's Margarita. This is a bare bones version of the classic margarita that leaves out the triple sec. The recipe is on screen now, but it's half an ounce of agave nectar, a full ounce of lime juice, and two ounces of tequila. I gotta say, this was my first time making a Tommy's Margarita, and I loved it. This is probably gonna be my go-to marg recipe in the future. As you can see, I'm weighing out the ice before I strain the drink into the glass. Both of our margaritas are getting four standard ice cubes, which weigh out to 3.8 fluid ounces. For our stirred cocktail, we're making a new pal, which is an absinthe-laced riff on the old pal, a classic that dates as far back as the 1930s. The recipe for this is a dash of absinthe, I'm spritzing mine into the glass, two dashes of Peychaud's bitters, three quarters of an ounce of Campari, three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth, and an ounce and a half of whiskey. Now I'm adding ice and giving it a stir to chill it down. Since this is a stirred drink, I'm serving this over a massive block of crystal clear ice. The one in our standard double rocks glass weighs a whopping seven fluid ounces. The one in the insulated tumbler, six ounces. Looking back, I would have liked to have them be the exact same size, but since we're measuring how much each block of ice loses, I think it's probably okay. And our final drink is a classic mint julep served over crushed ice. One of my favorite drinks for when temperatures start climbing. We're starting with half an ounce of simple syrup and about six to eight mint leaves. Now I'm taking my muddler and gently pressing down on the mint leaves to release their oils. Next up is six ounces of crushed ice and two ounces of bourbon. Now I'm gonna take my bar spoon and twist it back and forth through my hands to combine and chill the ingredients. I'm topping all of that off with an additional ounce of crushed ice and garnishing with a sprig of mint. There we go, six drinks, and now we wait. All right, we've reached the end of our testing. Now it's time for the weigh-in. I'm gonna strain out the drink into a separate glass. Then we're gonna weigh the amount of ice that's left over in each glass. That'll tell us how much dilution we actually lost in each drink. All right, first round is done, the Tommy's Margarita. In the glass, two additional ounces of water added to the drink through dilution from the ice melting. In the tumbler, only 0.7, 0.7. That's like almost nothing. That is just, that's really impressive. I, I thought this was gonna be a, a, a blowout for the tumblers, but I did not expect it to be that significant. That's 1.3 ounces of, of dilution saved from your drink. That's big. It tastes great. It, it honestly, it tastes like it's brand new. It tastes like it was freshly made from a bartender. Delicious. Mm. It's a good drink, but it's super watered down. You could drink this, but you know, it's just not that great. Let's do the new pal next. From the new pal in the standard double rocks glass, I put a huge rock of ice in there. It was seven ounces. When I just measured it now, after all the dilution, it was down to 4.3. So we're talking about 2.7 ounces of additional water being added to your drink. That is a lot. Now for the one in the tumbler. The ice cube for this one was six ounces. When I just waited a second ago, 5.1 ounces. So only 0.9 ounces of dilution in our drink. Significant, very significant. Let's do a taste test. It's a good drink. Very watered down though. Let's try this one. Mm. Yeah, that's much better. Each of the ingredients, you can kind of pick out the notes a little bit more, really nicely balanced. This one, it's just so extremely watered down that it, it kind of tastes, it tastes like you've, it tastes like it's been sitting out for an hour and then you went back to drink it, which is exactly what happened. And finally, the mint julep served over crushed ice. This one was actually a lot closer. I was really surprised about this. The metal cup mint julep started out with seven ounces worth of crushed ice in it that was measured from the beginning. 
and it has 4.3 ounces left. This one, same story, seven ounces of crushed ice in it, came out with 4.6, only 0.3 additional ounces of dilution in the metal cup. I gotta say, I was very surprised by this. I did not expect it to be anywhere near as close. Was it the shape of the ice? Was it because I packed it in pretty tight and then put additional crushed ice on top? Um, these are all factors that I would love to hear your thoughts on. Why do you think there was not as much dilution in this one? So let's wrap this up and talk about our results. Two out of three drinks did so much better in the tumblers that it, was, it wasn't even close. It really wasn't. In the third one, the mint julep, it was much closer. To me, I think this is kind of a runaway success. I think it proves that these cups are much better than standard glassware. So let's talk about when you would want to use these types of cups. If you are a visual person, this probably isn't gonna be for you. Um, if you'd like to post pictures of your drinks on Instagram or share them with your friends, this isn't gonna be, you know, no one's gonna be wowed by you posting a video of a drink in a metal cup. Uh, you wanna be able to see them. That's a big part of the drinking experience, but, if you're like me, if dilution drives you crazy, if you hate getting to the end of a drink and it tasting super watered down, if you were at a picnic or a barbecue, this would be a no-brainer. If you were, if it's really hot out, if you have a larger drink, I think these are all reasons why you'd wanna use something like this. But let me know what you think. Would you ever consider this? Are there drinks that you would drink this out, that you would use these types of cups with, but you wouldn't do them for others? Let me know in the comments. I'd really love to hear what you think about this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. Please share this with your friends. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Cheers.